Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Nathan Burke, a personal trainer and professional natural bodybuilder. We have a cool to be Catholic short film called Be a Dad. And Father Joseph will tell us about pink eye, purple hull peas, and much more. Welcome to Life on the Rock. Tonight, our guest is Nathan Burke. He's a personal trainer and a professional natural bodybuilder. He'll talk about how he incorporates faith with his working out. Our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. We have an obligation to take care of them. There's a big health craze today. How do we mix that with the faith? How can we offer that to the Lord? Yeah. How could that be part of our spiritual life? He'll tell us tonight. Yeah. And then we're going to get into fruit of the earth. This is brought to us by Father Joseph, and he's talking about pink eye, purple hull peas, and the transformation that takes place in their growth, and of course, when you're eating and cooking them and all of that stuff, and how what this means to a life of holiness. And now we'll watch a Cool to be Catholic short film by Rebecca Doyle titled, Be a Dad. Now? Don't worry. Tell him I'm on my way. I was going to make it home to tuck you in. Nathan Burke, it's great to have you here with us. You know, you're a bodybuilder, you, you're an evangelizer, you, you love communicating the faith. Before we get into what you do uh, evangelizing through bodybuilding, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your spiritual journey? All right, well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's like a blessing and a truly honor to be here. Um, what got me in the journey is I'm from Canton, Ohio, mm -hmm. and what got me was, was start with my father. Mm -hmm. My father was really into lifting weights, and my mom actually was really into like the nutrition component mm -hmm. of it. She would always make sure me and my siblings had, you know, our, our breakfast, lunch, dinner, because everything mm -hmm. was pretty healthy, mm -hmm. and that kind of ingrained into my mind about like healthy eating and things like that, and then I always saw my dad as a handyman, mm -hmm. and he... I always see him work on projects, and as he was working on projects, I would always see like his arms were like muscular, and I was like, yeah. man, that's really fascinating. I just really showed what strength is, just seeing like through my dad's work mm -hmm. and like that. So I basically just fell in love with um, just fitness at such a young age, mm -hmm. and then my dad got me involved in athletics. I played um, baseball, I played mm -hmm. football, and I always had a workout component with that. Mm -hmm. And my dad guided me along the way, and then, um, I just fell in love with fitness along mm -hmm. with my brother and sister mm -hmm. and we always worked out together and we just really grew in that in that lifestyle mm -hmm. of being healthy and so it parlayed into my athletics and then mm -hmm. once I was done with um, high school I started to get into the sport of bodybuilding mm -hmm. and like hey, what can I do now I'm like done with baseball and football I've graduated it's like Let's, um, let's get into some bodybuilding. Now. Mm -hmm. I started discovering the sport of it. Right. And then I've always learned about um, natural bodybuilding. Like I didn't really know much about natural bodybuilding. When I was younger, mm -hmm. I thought, okay, if you did bodybuilding, you had to take like performance enhancing drugs, mm -hmm. steroids. But for me, I um, just always wanted to stay mm -hmm. um, natural. You know, right. I just wanted to do it that way. And my dad mm -hmm. taught me that way. He's like, just always work hard just through, through diet, mm -hmm. through um, training hard. So I did that. And then I did my first bodybuilding show mm -hmm. in 2005 Okay. Um, at the age of 21. 
And from there, I've done a total of, of 14 shows. Wow. And this past year, I became a pro natural bodybuilder on right. uh, this past June. Congratulations. I, thank you. <laughs> and I did my first pro show September 30th in Florida. Oh. So. Well, that's amazing, yeah. uh, you know. And so, you know, along the way, you've had some setbacks, some, some difficulties, a health problem. Tell us about that. Yeah, so in 2008, mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with the uh, inflammatory bowel disease, uh, mm -hmm. ulcerative colitis, right. and I was able to get it treated mm -hmm. with um, uh, meds for four years. And then the early part of 2012, I my meds stopped working. I started mm -hmm. getting really, really sick, right. and I was taken to the hospital. Like my mm -hmm. meds weren't working. I'm like, what's going mm -hmm. on? So they tried to treat me in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And for the first like couple weeks I was in there, um, they just were treating me and things were okay. But then I just t took a major, major setback to mm -hmm. where nothing was working in the hospital either. Right. And so what happened was they told me, okay, if in order for you to get on with your life and to, and to recover, we're just gonna have to remove the entire large intestine. Mm -hmm. And without hesitation, I said, okay, because at this point, I couldn't eat. I, w I didn't eat for a month. Mm. Um, I, I was barely drinking. I was getting really dehydrated. Mm -hmm. And so I agreed to have the surgery. So in, in April of 2012, mm -hmm. I had my entire large intestine removed. Oh, nice. And um, there was a three-step surgery. Mm -hmm. And then December of the same year, I had uh, what they call an ostomy. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they call it J-pouch, mm -hmm. which is um, they take one end of my small mm -hmm. intestine and put it on the other end and right. form, it's like my new, my new colon basically. Mm -hmm. And then my final surgery was in March of 2013. Mm -hmm. And then, but from there, it got my life back and I was able to re make a full recovery mm -hmm. and get back into fitness and get back right back into bodybuilding. So, wow. Yeah. And so what, what was your prayer at this time? What, what, what were you, uh, you know, what was, what was in your mind with God and what was he doing or what did you think was going on? Yeah, so when I was in the hospital, there was not one moment mm -hmm. where I was like, God, why? Like, like why are you, is this happening? I, I, I asked why, but not mm -hmm. in a why of being like, so I must have done something wrong, you mm -hmm. know, or, or why is this happening? I shouldn't be suffering like this. I more or less ask like, okay, I'm in here, um, I'm not eating, mm -hmm. um, I'm suffering, mm -hmm. but I found out how am I going to use this suffering. Mm -hmm. I know that this is, there's going to be a greater good that's going to come from this. Mm -hmm. And basically, I learned a lot from our very own Mother Angelica. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from her. She talked about the gift of suffering. Mm -hmm and that you can use that suffering and offer it up. Mm -hmm. And so when I was in the hospital, mm -hmm. instead of just laying there and being bitter, I would be like, God, who can I offer this up for today? You mm -hmm. know, and I just united my suffering with the cross. Mm -hmm. And basically what, what that did was it, it made me to like take my, myself out of, mm -hmm. out of me and stop thinking about myself. Mm -hmm allow me to think about the cross and the passion and what mm -hmm. he went through and I thought about all the others that suffered yeah. and that we can use this suffering mm -hmm. and, and not just let it go to waste because it is a truly a gift Amen. so when I was in there I mm -hmm. was just um, people would look at me mm -hmm. I would have people come in like why are you so calm you know and I would just tell them you know I'm I'm just because I'm, I'm, I'm offering this up mm -hmm. um, I'm not you know, I'm not using this as a, a gateway to be like, okay, this is this is not how who I am. This is mm -hmm. what I'm supposed to be is is a, a, it's like a soldier, a true mm -hmm. disciple, and so that just allowed me to tell others about right. why I'm there, you know, and not just not just lay there in self pity, you know. Okay. So, so you know, you're a man who who's after God's own heart. You know, God is in every area of your life. You know, that, that's very obvious about what you, what you just shared with us now. And so you know, we're going to be going off to a break. But when we get back, we're going to ask you how you bring God, how you evangelize through bodybuilding. Great. Thank you. Nathan Burke, uh, man, you know, it's, I, I really enjoyed the first uh, part of this show and, and hearing about your, your life and your journey. And now tell us about, about bodybuilding, how you bring the faith to bodybuilding. Explain to us the various parallels of, of, of the faith and lifting weights. All right, great. Well, basically with bodybuilding, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're building up the body. Mm -hmm. the, the one thing that makes sure you got to understand is our bodies are not our own. Mm -hmm. 
they are a temple of the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit Amen. dwells yeah. within us. And so I always think about bodybuilding. Yeah, we're building up the body, but the body is that temple, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not just building it up for the physical. It's building mm -hmm. it up for the spiritual and for the mm -hmm. for the kingdom, you know. So with with the Catholic faith, there's a lot of parallels in there with a lot of things I do. Mm -hmm. And when, with lifting weights is every time I go in mm -hmm. there, there's three elements that mm -hmm. I partake in. One of them is accept. Right. Um, I'm sorry. It's ask, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> offer, and accept. Ask, and offer, and accept. Yes. All right. So when I go in there, I ask God, please be attentive to me in the gym. Please mm -hmm. be attentive to me in, in lifting weights. I want his presence. I want, him to, I want to feel his presence in that weight room as mm -hmm. I go through. And that, again, going back to that kind of takes me out of myself mm -hmm. and make sure that God is first place even in the weight room. Mm -hmm. Okay. The second thing I do is I offer. So I mm -hmm. offer up. I, I work out for anybody who's gone through any kind of illnesses or impairments that do not have mm -hmm. the capabilities to be in a gym and mm -hmm. work out. So I mm -hmm. offer it up for them, yeah. and that's my way of like sacrificing. Sure. There's a lot of pain in there. Yes. You know, in the gym. <laughs> so knowing that I can sacrifice my workout mm -hmm. for something else, mm -hmm. and that kind of brings me back to one of my favorite saints, and that's Saint Maximilian Kolbe, mm -hmm. reading about what he did in Auschwitz, Germany, about mm -hmm. he sacrificed himself. For in the in the German death camp, mm -hmm. and how he put himself out there instead of someone else. He's like, no, you take me instead. Mm -hmm. So he's sacrificing. He's offering up himself. Mm -hmm. So I always tie those things in with the saints, mm -hmm. especially him, with my workout and mm -hmm. offering up because I know I'm going to go through pain. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to struggle, but I want to use that pain. I just don't want to mm -hmm. feel that pain just to mm -hmm. improve my body. Right. I want to improve my spiritual life sure. in that weight room, so I can use that as that platform mm -hmm. to do that. And then the third one is just accepting. I'm like, whatever mm -hmm. happens here, God, I'm accepting that this is your will. You mm -hmm. know, I'm accepting it either good or bad in this weight room, mm -hmm. this workout. I'm just accepting, you know. Yeah. And again, that allows me to be humble mm -hmm. and allows me, again, take myself out of myself and just give this all to you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the main things I do each time I go into the, the room, mm -hmm. those three elements, just ask, offer, accept. And that's a true parallel because... Um, I tie that into like the sacraments too, mm -hmm. you know, sure. I, you know, especially the sacrament mm -hmm. of confession, mm -hmm. you know, with bodybuilding, you're always breaking your muscles mm -hmm. down and you always got to repair, you got to clean everything up with like mm -hmm. your nutrition mm -hmm. and everything like that. So with one of the things I do with confession is I think the same thing, like I'm going in there mm -hmm. and I'm cleansing my sins, my, sure. my soul is being yeah. cleaned. And okay. so the same in the weight room, I'm cleaning myself mm -hmm. up, I'm making my body better, mm -hmm. I'm getting rid of impurities through mm -hmm. proper nutrition. Great. Same thing with confession, I'm getting rid of those impurities mm -hmm. on the soul. And the same thing with like regular, you want to make confession mm -hmm. regular, well the workout's got to be regular in order for you to improve your body. Right. And so, yeah. I, okay, the workout's got to be regular, mm -hmm. well the sacraments got to be regular too. It can't just be one one mm -hmm. workout yeah. and then you'll be good and right. you go back maybe three months, four months later. It's not yeah. going to do anything. Well, okay. with to make it a good workout and a good mm -hmm. bodybuilder, you got to show that consistency. Well, you got to mm -hmm. show the consistency sure. with the, the, the Catholic faith and the mm -hmm. sacraments. And so, yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a very powerful uh, explanation there and way to communicate the faith. Now, you are, you are a personal trainer. Correct. And you're using your talents, your gifts, uh, your skills uh, to in an organization called Fit from Faith. Tell us a little bit about that. Correct. Yeah. So my I also have a background in exercise science. Mm -hmm. So I have my bachelor's degree mm -hmm. in that field, and I became a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. And so Fit from Faith is it was actually developed by a friend of mine mm -hmm. named Lindsay, and basically she formed it as a way of like how can I reach different um, seminaries, mm -hmm. um, convents, religious centers. Just reach out to the clergy, reach out mm -hmm. to the lay people, reach out to everybody to promote fitness and faith. How can we do it in that avenue? You know, so what Fit from Faith is, it's a nonprofit organization to create it to make the church healthy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it's, it was formed and it developed like four different coaches. So it's her, her twin sister, mm -hmm. myself, and another um, guy named Adam. And all of us together are are like-minded we all have our own flair to it mm -hmm. so we all have that like-minded passion of fitness mm -hmm. we have we provide our own unique flair we each have our different background that we can really 
unite together mm -hmm. and uh, form this organization. And so basically what we do is, you know, you do um, wellness um, engagements, speaking mm -hmm. engagements. Sure. We um, dev uh, developed a curriculum mm -hmm. for, um, right now there's only is one, it's at the Borough Mayo Seminary, mm -hmm. Seminary at the Diocese of Cleveland. Mm -hmm. um, so there's one curriculum in it right now. So that's what we want to do is develop a curriculum sure. for seminaries and mm -hmm. for the clergy and just to promote um, habitual change, not necessarily changing like, okay, here's, here's a diet follow, or here's a training program follow, but no, let's, let's focus on mm -hmm. habits. Mm -hmm. How can we change your habits to um, make you stronger in mind, body, and spirit? Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's a lot has to do with just um, conversion of heart too. Mm -hmm. And so making a, be, becoming a stronger, better version of yourself, mm -hmm. spiritually, physically, again, it goes back to the mind, body, spirit, all those components together. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, that's great. You know, uh, fitness and, and bodybuilding, you know, the message of the world is that you got to look perfect. You got to look strong. And there's a certain vanity that, come about, that comes about it. And that can be a, a little scary for the Christian. How do you strike that balance of, uh, of, of, of staying fit, staying healthy, and of course, uh, practicing your faith and loving God? Well, it all comes down to the fact that our bodies are mm -hmm. not our own. You know, sure. I always think about that. A lot of people just think, too much of themselves, yeah. okay? And so if you can just kind of separate yourself mm -hmm. and just thinking, okay, this is not ours. Right. Our bodies mm -hmm. were bought with a price. Mm -hmm. um, and so our price tag, you know, sure. is you look into the cross, you know? That's right. And, and so I take care yeah. of it so it's united, so it can mm -hmm. be built, and so we can be prepared for the yeah. kingdom, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I just try to tell people, you know, you go in, you'd go mm -hmm. in there and just, our culture, it's tough with our culture yeah, these days. You walk sure. into the world, what do you see? And what do you see on the media? You know, you see everybody has got to look a certain right. way. You got to be built mm -hmm. a certain way. But it goes back to that separation of, of the body and, mm -hmm. and making sure that you just, you know, you, you got to just focus on the Lord. You got to just have making that. Making it prayerful. Make, making it prayerful. Make, yeah. Focus on prayer. Bring, make, bringing God into every area of your exactly, life. Exactly. Yeah, every just, area of your as life. As you do so well. Yes. Well, you know, Nathan, it's been a pleasure to have you here with us. You spoke very well. You know, I'm sure our people are going to be very edified, inspired by what you say. And uh, come back anytime, brother. Uh, yeah, God bless you. And <laughs> it's a pleasure being here. I really appreciate <laughs> Wonderful. it. I'm really blessed. And now here's Father Joseph with Fruit of the Earth. Welcome to Plant Gardens and Eat the Fruits a series dedicated to enjoying God's good creation and helping you to be healthy in body and soul. Behind me are pink eye purple hole peas, which is a popular variation of black eyed peas, which they like here in Alabama. They traditionally eat them on New Year's Day in hopes of a prosperous new year. It's a plant, it's actually not a pea, it's a bean. <laughs> That's very high in protein, so it's a good source of protein. It's high in fiber, of course, as well as in a folate, which is a type of B vitamin that prevents anemia and birth defects, as well as cancer. So th these come in the purple holes for which they're named, and then you shell the beans or the peas out of it and you'll cook those peas. You can also eat them raw. You can actually cook the pods and the beans together uh, and make something as well. Often they will put them in a pan with a little water, maybe a little piece of bacon or something like that to give it some flavor and just delicious. That's why people like especially the pink eye purple hole peas because they like them even better than the black eyed peas. But you think about how these change colors so they start off as a green pod that you see here and then gradually they get some elements of purple and then finally they are this deep, rich purple. And to think about the transforming work of God in our own lives, of how he is taking us where we are. So wherever you are, maybe you're far from God, maybe you've been serious about your spiritual life, but wherever we are, God wants to take us from where we are and he wants to transform us more and more into his likeness. That was one of the favorite passages of Mother Angelica. In fact, it's in front of her tomb from 2 Corinthians 3.18. That we gazing on the Lord with unveiled faces are being transformed from glory to glory by the Spirit into his likeness. 
That's what God wants to do with you. That's what he wants to do with each of us. It's not like we remain where we are, but that each day we grow in holiness. If we give God the opportunity, if we open the door and say, God, I want you to be part of my life today. And so I begin my day with you and I offer it to you. I want to be your servant this day. I want you to use me however you will. I want to say with Mary, be it done to me according to your word and to spend some time in prayer looking for those opportunities to maybe help another person to grow in their faith or just to help them through works of charity which communicates God's love to them. These are all ways that God will continue his work of transforming us and feeding our souls with what is good. Just like these plants need good nutrition to be healthy, they need good soil. So our souls too need the nutrition of good spiritual reading and the scriptures and good programs you might watch or listen to on EWTN. These are all things that can feed and nourish our souls so that it continues to thrive and to be transformed into the likeness of Christ. So once again, I conclude with the words of St. Francis from the Canticle of Brother Son. Praise to you, O God, for the earth our mother, who brings forth wonderful fruits. content tonight. We had Father Joseph's teaching in the garden about pink eye purple hull peas. They are good and you really can eat them raw. I did it. And in summer heat it's, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Joseph, Father Joseph talked about the transformation in those peas mm -hmm. and he connected it to the transformation and holiness that needs to occur in us. That mm -hmm. by God's grace we're transformed from within. Mm -hmm. Made temples of the Holy Spirit you know, to live our Christian vocations yeah. to be like Christ in the world. And we also saw a Cool to be Catholic short video mm -hmm. called Be a Dad. And I love that simple message of be present in your children's mm -hmm. life. Be a dad and show up. Mm -hmm. And in, in living out that vocation of being present, of serving mm -hmm. your kids and guiding them and protecting them, it's a path to holiness. It's a path to transformation. Mm -hmm. And then Father Leonard, you led the interview with Nathan Burke. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Well. You know, it goes along with this previous video. You know, we saw a strong dad there, a faithful father, a, so a man who was faithful to his vocation. And Nathan Berg had a great father figure himself. His father is, uh, you know, used to do a lot of exercise and uh, he was very fit. And so Nathan was inspired by that because uh, he looked up to his father and that was a result of a faithful and good, strong father. And so, uh, so yeah, there's, there's much we can learn from there, yeah. So our challenge, our Into the Vineyard challenge this week is get some exercise. Maybe you're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Well, get, get moving. You know, maybe do lifting or walking or something to take care of that temple. You know, good health helps us to be good servants. We're supposed mm -hmm. to serve the kingdom in a sense, further that kingdom. You know, good health allows us to show up, be present, mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. be servants. Yeah, there's many advantages to exercising. You know, St. Paul says that, that uh, though exercise, uh, physical exercise is of some good, spiritual uh, training is of all the more. You know, by him saying that, he's telling us that it is important to, to exercise, to do some kind of a, a physical activity, you know, uh, because it, this is good for us, you know, get, to have a healthy body. You know, one thing about exercise is it builds up our confidence, it relieves stress and pressure. You know, there's so many benefits. So we are temples of the Holy Spirit, according to St. Yeah. Paul. We do have an obligation to take care of that temple. So we'll send you out into that vineyard with a blessing. May our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you. May He give you His peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock.
it's rising you're the same 